Apache Spark is an open source analytics engine for big data and machine learning. Applications for Apache Spark can be written using various languages like Java, Python, R, SQL. And now it's also possible to write application for Apache Spark using the .NET Core framework. In this video, I will show you how to install Apache Spark on Windows and write an application using .NET for Apache Spark. Let's get started. First, we will install all the dependencies that are necessary to get Spark running on .NET. The first thing to do, as you can see on this instructions page for Spark.NET, is to download and install various packages. Download and install all these packages. The first three one comes with a standard installer and all you have to do is to follow the installation wizard. The fourth one are binaries, so there's no wizard that comes with it. So you have to tell Windows how to use these binaries. To get this done, we first we have to download the package. I already downloaded it to save time. Let me show you. You have to download this package. This is the package already downloaded. You have to untip it. I think we have to do this twice. Uh, yeah, twice, and then untip it again. So now these are the Spark binaries and commands. The Spark Summit one is the command most used to start or submit an Apache Spark to a cluster or to the local or to the local machine. So now let's test if this if Windows can find this one. So if we just do Spark submit. As you can see here, the operating system has no clue what Spark submit is. So we have to fix this first. So the first thing to do, uh, it would have been better if I just copied this guy. So to avoid copying the uncompressed folder around, I think I will just copy the compressed one to a special destination. So here on my machine, on the, under the dev folder, I'm going to create a new one called Apache. And under Apache, you create a new folder called Spark. And under Spark, here I'm going to untip everything again. Spark and then unzip this thing again. So Spark, we don't need this one. We don't need this one. We also this one anymore so now what we are going to do we are going to Apache Spark uh, what am I doing here let me do this I don't need this guy also so what I have now is I have a folder called Spark where all the Spark binaries and files are located. So the next thing to do is I'm going to take I'm going to take this part and put it under my environment system variable. So system variable it is the path. 
system properties so environment variables then I will go to messed up path there it is edit I'm going to add a new entry let's see here okay okay now let's see if we can't find it's still not recognized I think I have to Tick, tick, tack, tick, tack, tick, tack, tick, tack, tick, tack, tick, tick. Yep, look like all the jar files are starting. So Okay, there we go. Spark Summit is now now recognized as an application on our device. So next step. The next step on the installation instruction is to download and install Microsoft Spark Worker. Select a Microsoft Spark Worker release from the .NET Apache Spark GitHub release page. So let's do this. Uh, the Windows one is the one we are interested in. I already downloaded it. You can see it uh, here. Yeah, you can see it here. So let's extract all extract files okay. now I have it here this is also a folder full of binaries so let's see what are the instructions for this one So you have to do the same thing we did before for Apache Spark 241 for this one. So we are going to do the same game, but this, this time a little bit. So Apache Dev, Apache Spark. Create a new folder. We call it. Uh, how am I going to call this guy? Let's say .NET Runner. Let's call it Spark .NET Runner. So. everything okay now it's extracted we don't need misty one anymore I have the same thing here to do guy anymore okay now we also have to put this one into our path so let's do the same thing environment where's the path oh, there it is edit add a new entry So right now create a new 
okay with all this done we now have all the prerequisited necessary on my machine the reason why i didn't install the dotnet core sdk or visual studio 2019 is because i already have them installed so we can take a quick look here let's say dot net uh, what list s sdks i guess dot uh, net list What is this? So as, as you can see, I already have various .NET SDKs already installed. So we are fine if you go to this page and download and install the, the latest one, then you should not have any problem. It's the same as uh, Visual Studio. 2019 feel safe to go and download the community edition and we will start we will write the first code to test that our installation was successful and that spark programs can run with dotnet now that we have installed the dependencies Let's write a small C sharp application to test our installation of Apache Spark. What I'm going to do next is to write is to follow this instruction here and create is and create an application that reads a file called people.json and just show the output. Let's so I'm going to move over to Visual Studio. Ta -da, boom. Visual Studio, the instruction, I can move them over there. So create a new project, standard application, console application, .NET Core. Next, give this thing a brilliant name, Hello Spark, and create a project. So now the project is created, I'm going to copy and paste this here so there's no reason to write that right now and as you can see we already have some complaints from visual studio because it can't find the namespaces so what we have to do next is to install is to add some nugget packages to our project so manage nugget packages we are going to look we are looking for uh, microsoft spark this is what we are looking for and then we are going to install it so now that it's installed you can see the warnings are gone so now you can build our application the application is successfully built so now we need to create the file called people.json so i'm going to copy this is the contain of the people.json copy it and then i'm going to navigate to the output directory of my application in our case this is so open in folder the output directory this is the bin directory so here is the output directory of our application so i'm going to create a new file here so i'm creating a new file here with notepad plus plus and then i'm going to save it as json json file called people 
Now let's navigate. Let's just save it here on the desktop. Saved. Copy. Paste. So here we have our file with three lines. Now let's start our application. So the next step is go to the directory, create the file, already done. The next is to run the application. So let's run the application. Um, here we are. And let me take a look. How to run the application. Spark summit. And then, okay. Let's do it. Where is my output directory? This is my output directory. So I've got to CD in there, CD, and then Spark Submit. it's even better to just copy and paste it from the page so copy and paste there's one thing you have to change here this one as you can see here Microsoft Spark 2.4.0 and the version replace this version with one with o dot two o dot so here this is what i've done here i've replaced it exactly like that and then what's the name of the application it's not really spark but it's hello spark and then let's start at first you will get some warnings later i will show you how you can disable all these uh, warnings and only get errors but for now it's completely it should not create any problems and there we go our application runs and exits properly so here you can see the content of our json file let me show you the json file again so this is the json file name michael name andy name justin and as you can see michael doesn't have a property age that's why we have age null for michael so i will say that was it this is how you can run an apache spark application on windows using the dotnet core framework